All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It is Tuesday. I just put one out yesterday, but this is a bonus episode. And our yearly watch nerding, our gathering here, I got Bo Gorey, the master uh, restorer of Rolexes and all watches that are just damaged. This guy is an artist over at LA Watchworks. He is here, third year. And then, of course, my uh, demon partner here, Kevin Christie, who, uh, between he and I, we only talk watches. <laughs> it's pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how are you guys? Doing great, brother. Doing good. Oh, shit. I thought you wore the one for a minute that I love that one. Keeping that... it simple today. 5513 on a Phoenix NATO. Yeah, you got yeah. a mustache rocking still. Indeed, indeed. You're looking, uh, you're looking good, man. Thank you, brother. You say, same to you. Just uh, doing my thing. Yeah, working hard. Yeah. Yep. Has business changed much during this whole thing for you? Um, initially, yeah. I mean, just due to the unknown, and we didn't really have much information. I mean, we shut down for yeah. you know yeah. uh, almost two months, like everybody else did. And then, um, you know, started back with just uh, all our team kind of being staggered, you know, just just working like a modified swing shift. So not everybody was there like on top of each other at the same time. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're a small crew, you know, there's there's six of us, including me. So yeah, now we're back up to full swing. And we, I mean, it's weird. I mean, you guys have been paying attention. I'm sure the watch market hasn't declined at all. So, there yeah. was a one week period. <laughs> yeah, right. When there no was one... a one week period where everything went down about 15%, and then it, it lasted under nine days, <sighs> and, and then it, it went right back. Yeah. Like yeah. someone was like, should I buy a sub now? I was like, yeah. And then like a week later, he's like, I've been looking at him. I was like, yeah, you're, you missed your window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went down for a minute. You're right. Yeah. But yeah, we're humming right along. So you won't hear me complain. Yeah. It's amazing how COVID has not affected luxury items. Uh, property is selling right now through the roof. Yeah. Cars, there are no... Well, my buddy's trying to buy a Toyota Tacoma right now. Oh, good luck. Yep, good luck. Toyota closed for uh, four months during COVID. Mm-hmm. So there's no, uh, no merchandise yeah. out there. Same with Harley-Davidson. Even though Harley-Davidson is having their worst... Uh, couple of years they're also having a huge year because uh they stopped selling or making new bikes for months so it was like well what's on the floor is what's on the floor so, so they just stopped production completely yeah yeah because wow. they didn't have anybody in the factories right right and what that does is it creates a market of no discount so my yeah. buddy's trying to get a tacoma right now and we all, I've talked about it, the TRD Army Green. Yep, right t- now, Toyota guys, yep. Yep. They have a $15,000 markup what? over here at Lark- Lancashire Toyota on the TRD Tacoma. It's Insane. The Army Green one. It's the last one they're getting for the year. And he goes, when I first went over there six months ago, it was a five grand markup. Then the COVID hit, it was a 10 grand markup. Now it's 15 markup on a paint job on a toyota and people are buying that's stupid well you know what it is is uh it's off-road vehicles i mean in the overland community i mean you you've seen my truck and yeah. um you know my wife and i are buying a travel trailer and there's nothing anywhere because you know people can't do much so they're taking an interest in the outdoors and i see a lot more people out on the trails yeah the outdoors feel safer Yep. So I think people yep. are like, you know, if we get in the middle of a field, we'll be all right. Right. Like, that seems appealing. You know? Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. I was just up at Yosemite. And uh, you, you want to talk about just heaven. And, and it also resets your brain yeah. of kind of like, wow, how come I wasn't doing this shit before? Uh, yeah. You know, it's pretty wild. Yeah, fresh air, vitamin D, you know, not getting a constant influx of media. Yeah. Yeah, oh God, yeah. Go where there's no signal. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's, it, at first, you're that sounds like out. a slogan. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like for hiking shoes, go where there's no signal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is a good one, right? North Face. Sell that to Morel. Yeah. <laughs> ultra. You know, Ultra is like this uh, hiking shoe that Marin turned me onto, and now I'm hooked on them. You know. I I love. I have no use for hiking shoes. I just love the way they look. I love a hiking sneaker that's like brown and purple. Like I fucking, yeah. it's yep. so good looking. Yeah, there. I got a bunch over here. I'm about to do a shootout mm-hmm. uh, for YouTube. 
uh, not an influence. I'm an influencer, but more of like. I got fucked wide feet. They're like duck feet. They're narrow in the back, and then they go out crazy wide. Flippers. So yeah. fitment is an issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought this ultra shoe, and then I you know, went on YouTube and started looking at reviews and shit, and people are serious about their hiking boots. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is ultra the brand or the model? It's, uh, it's right there behind you. It's, the, it's a brand. And what they're famous for is a giant wide toe box. Ah, okay. So you know those ugly shoes that people wear where it's just your foot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's just your foot. It's like a rubber skin. Like, like the Vibram Five Fingers. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, similar to that, but you're not wearing a, the foot. You're wearing a shoe. <laughs> their, their thing is... <laughs> My what? cousin wears those foot shoes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm every time I see him, like there's something wrong here. Yeah, I so, think Bo has some. What you got? Some of those feet shoes? No, negative. <laughs> but I mean, I got plenty of stuff with Vibram soles. That's where they really took off. Like they were the one, like the Vibram five fingers. But their soles, yeah, I the mean, best. are on all good hiking boots now. And even like, I don't, I don't know if Red Wing uses them, but a lot no, of the boot do. companies some, do. They some some Red Wings come with Vibrams. I yeah. think the Chuka okay. boot. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's get into why we're here. We're, we're always here. Uh, we meet once a year. Of course, in April, uh, Basel World was canceled. Yep. Uh, but it didn't even matter because Rolex and uh, uh, Paddock had announced that they were leaving Basel. And there yep. was all these talk about each year. It was just ridiculous what they were charging for booths, like a million-dollar booth. And we know in the Instagram world, and Tudor proved it quite well, Yep. don't even need Basel World, drop the Black Bay 58 on Instagram, and yeah. you've lit the whole place on fire yep. in a day. Yep. Yeah. I so, mean, you're basically reaching 95% of your audience over the internet anyway. So if you think about the number of people that go to Basel World, it's in the, what, high thousands? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. But that's nothing. That's nothing. Right. Yeah. If you look at how many people follow Rolex or follow Tudor. And those are just industry heads and, yeah. and salespeople from ADs. You know, it's dorks. not consumers. Yeah. It's not. And they're not like they don't represent the average consumer at all. Right. No. And I think that thing's a lot like the NAM show, which is a big uh, national association of music merchants where it was just something where the people in the biz could get away yeah. for a week and and party and and be like oh god we're outside of the grind yeah like it's, SEMA or shot show exactly. or anything same else. thing yeah. it's like an art fair it's right, for all right. the big people to get together and party and do coke exactly <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean honestly they want to party like yeah. they have like mo- people I think people with money jobs they're in a building all the time they're like I want to go to Miami and get wasted and hang out with cool people like I'm tired of just totally. sitting in front of my computer all right day. absolutely yeah. so. They announce they're going to do their own thing. But, of course, Basel doesn't even happen. So then they say, the watches always come out around April. And Rolex says, well, we're going to figure out what we're going to do. So they figured out they're going to drop them August 31st, September 1st at midnight, whatever time you grabbed onto it. They're going to drop the original watches that were supposed to come out in April, and then they're going to drop another bunch, I guess, next April, from what I heard, hmm. uh, at their own thing or whatever, if they ever get that going because of the, the COVID. Anyway, so they drop some stuff. And of course, every year we see the same kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the predictions, the yeah. Coke's coming. They were super wrong this year. Yeah, yeah. they were super wrong this year. Right, because it was all discontinued Milgauss, so there, it was all new Milgauss that's coming. Right, with a bezel, with like a normal. They're still they're, supposedly that's still happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, a little birdie told me that, that we will see yeah. an updated Milgauss with a rotating bezel. With the bezel, like the original 60s one? Right. I, I, we're not going to see like a honeycomb dial. I'm sure everybody would love that, but <sighs> supposedly it is going to happen still. Wow. Okay. okay, it'll probably cost a fortune. I'm sure. I and think extremely the, limited. The Milgauss. Yeah. With a honeycomb dial and a a bezel, would probably wipe out the sub for a long time. Maybe. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to have something like a turner graph. Do you think they would do a, a crown guard or no crown guard still? Uh, I don't think they're going to do crown guards because then they would they would be retooling an entirely new case, uh, and that's yeah. kind of the same thing you saw with the uh, the Air King. Mm-hmm. That's it was an excess of Milgauss cases. It's yeah. the same case, yeah. You know, with with the inner 
the uh, Faraday cage and everything. So the case for the Air King isn't the same case as the Explorer 39 millimeter floor? No, because no. the Air King has uh, a Faraday cage like the Milgauss. What the is Air that? King's 40 uh, is 40? The, 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 the green and black one. The, oh, that yeah, one, yeah, yeah. oh, that one with the crazy numbers. There's a numbers. nickname for it. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, the one with the crazy number. It right. looks like a car, it looks like a car, like, speedometer. Yeah. 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 That watch absolutely has not sold, which is pretty I don't know, Nat. No, it's gone up lately. Yeah. It, yeah. it, You're it, right, it spiked, like, about, I'd say, a year ago, yeah. where it was laying around all the time, and then all of a sudden, when you couldn't get anything... Like, I think it was all the people that wanted the Explorer, the 39 millimeter Explorer and couldn't right. get them. They were like, well, this Air King looks almost identical. And it has, th- honestly, I do love it. It has green ink. It has that weird yellow Rolex printed yeah. logo. Right. It's just the kind of weird where someday it's going to be, I think, really desirable. Any, you, I mean, we all know anytime Rolex makes something a Oddballs. little ugly. <laughs> yep. Except, I mean, it's, it's so fascinating, though, the... New Explorer 2s are just now getting close to their retail price. Right. But I will say the weirdest thing I've seen, I saw just an older White Dial Explorer 2, and it was nine grand. And I was like, "Where? what world are we in now? What like, reference? It was the 15750? If it was a five five zero, I would understand it because that's that's you know the Mark One. It's got the fat font, square yeah. off bezel, but five seven zero nine grand was it? I it mean, was box and papers. It was like brand new, but still. I get it. I get it. You're talking about a watch that two years ago was still under five grand, right? Yeah. If you fa- you know, it was it is the least sought after. I lo- I think they're cool yeah, looking, I like but a it was polar. just not the one that people seem to want. But, you know, Rolex world is bizarro world now. So it, it's funny, you know, you're talking about like oddballs and Rolex yeah. anomalies. So I still don't like it today. But the, the two-tone Sea Dweller oh, that, yeah. that they did last year, they yeah. did Ugh. nothing. I don't know anyone who's interested in that watch. No. I've, so I've never seen it. I'm pretty sure if it's not discontinued, it's going to be. Yeah. So what are we going to see as far as collectability on that? It's huge. And it's... <laughs> It's the ultimate tool watch. It's a sea dweller. You yeah, know, it's made yeah. for saturation, saturation diving, which no one does in it. But still, why do we need gold? But even sea dwellers aren't that. They haven't gone up much. I love them. I've got a soft spot. Sea, sea oh, dweller is my yeah. favorite. Well, it's such a clean look. If, right. you, if you want a sub, but you, and you, but you need the date, but you don't like the bubble, the sea dweller was always the, the perfect solution. Do you know how many guys have sent us subs just to swap out the, yeah. the 295C for a 295 crystal with no Cyclops? Just buy a yeah. damn sea dweller. It's can like a just, little heavier. Can you cut yeah. the Cyclops off? No. Really? No, no, no. You can't. I thought you could. Them. No. I, if you can, I don't do it. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, we'll swap them out for uh, I've always Cyclops. thought, because this, in, at least in, to my eye, the Sea Dweller, there's a little more depth from the crystal. It's a to much the, thicker crystal. To the dial. Yeah. So it, uh, it looks slightly smaller. That's what I like. It does. It looked yeah. a little smaller on my wrist. Right. But it was heavy as shit. It's yeah. like a mini top hat. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's a completely different crystal system. Yeah. It's, it's the ring lock, so it doesn't attach the same at all. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I prefer it. It's an awesome system. I wish they did it on all the sport watches. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what's crazy. So we're talking Milgauss discontinued. That didn't happen. Every year they, they say that. It still could happen at the end of the year for the April run. You I know? hope not, dude. I was looking at pictures of the green crystal. It is about the coolest looking watch. I think it's one of the most coolest underrated watches ever because it's so outside the box. It's got the orange lightning bolt hand. It's got mm-hmm. the tic-tac markers. It's got that green lens. And it... Um, you know, I, uh, I saw Bo, he, he took the shiny links down, yeah. and it looks fantastic. Yeah. If it didn't, it just doesn't look right on my wrist, but as far as just the looks of a watch, it's about as cool looking as you can get. It's, it's so underrated. It's got a lightning bolt. Second yeah, hand. But it's got a lightning bolt for God's Straight sake. AC I mean, DC. Man. <laughs> That's what's so crazy to me. And even the, the non green crystal one is rad looking. Yeah, it's got, yeah. but I, that's the one I had. And it just, sat wrong on my wrist so it just bugged me it's a heavy watch it's heavy and it just my wrist is too small well it's that double case back is bizarre yeah yeah. um and and another interesting thing is we're way deep into the um explore to repop and if you know anything about how hard rolex stainless steel watches are to get 
if you were in middle America, chances are you still could get a Milgaus Air King Explorer 2. Yeah. There might be, one, might in be there. one in stores. Your best chance would be the, one the of best chance. Two. And those were out there all the time. Now, I remember I originally got the Explorer 2 when they reissued it with the black with the ghost hands. And I liked it at first. And then it really, the dial bothered me. The hands just looked too, everything was too blunt. The markers. Well, maxi everything. And maxi everything. Maxi everything. It was really what it is. Yeah. It was maxi everything. So it was really. It really did not uh, sit well with it me. It doesn't look the dial. It's like that first date, just two. The dial, the markers were so big, it just was like not terribly refined. Looking. Right, and screaming at a, you, and especially on a date, just you're like you want it to look nice, a little and understated, refined, yeah. and kind of understated exactly. And it just didn't. Yeah. And so, the case on that, to me, the way the there's something about that stainless steel bezel and the way it it kind of tapers down towards the watch. That makes it look wider. The fluted bezel or the smooth bezel? The smooth bezel. It's because of the uh, reflection. Ah, yeah. The fluted bezel to me was just too big. It is they big. both look too big, like on that watch. Yeah. So those are still here. Didn't do anything with that. Yeah. And I think that Rolex really, we've said this before, they don't just discontinue shit. It's been very rare. Uh, Kevin brought it up outside. They discontinued the 39 millimeter. Oyster uh, Perpetual. Which is a two-year watch now. Right. And the only other one I ever saw him discontinue real quick uh, was the Ceramic Bezel Sea Dweller. It's a two-year watch, like 16, 15, 16 or something, which, right. is, which is probably the best Sea Dweller they ever made. Because right after that, they dropped that dumb big one with the red writing and shit. And it had a blister. It was just a... Uh, atrocity of mixtures of watches. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. like, what are you doing here? You know? Also, like to spend the money to make a whole new case. Yeah. Because like, what is it, 44 mil? No, 43. Right. Yeah, 43. So you, so you got what? You went up to what, three millimeters from the original size. It was a mess. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't know. sell. I mean, they're hard to get, but they're nobody's, expensive. nobody's wanting one. Yeah. You look on eBay, they're out there. So th- that. That didn't happen. Also, a couple other things that didn't happen, of course. We didn't get the Coke like people think every year. There's no way they're going to do a Coke this soon after the Pepsi. And then they rocked the, uh, they shocked us all with doing a Batman with a Jubilee. Yeah. That was quite strange. If and when they do the Coke, they're going to do the same thing they did last time. They're going to release it in white gold first. Right. (laughs) And then maybe if we get lucky, we'll see steel. Yep. So we we dig into what they did drop, and it was pretty uh, pretty interesting. And of course, they did the subs, and we knew they were going to do the sub because the sub needed this new movement that's been around for a few years now, and the sub was rocking this eight year old movement. Is that is the reason this? Would you say the reason that the size change was the movements bigger? No, I no, don't think it's so. the same. Okay. It's the same movement as the GMT guy. Oh, okay, yeah, and uh, they did a couple interesting things. They made they finally they they did the most crucial mistake ever when they dropped that deep sea, the James Cameron one, where the links were way too small on the bottom of the wrist. Right. So the watch just sat it over. Tapered it. too much. So they widened the links on the new sub all the way around. Mm-hmm. So that is pretty cool. But I don't understand the new 41 millimeter case. To me, it's quite strange. I think if anything, it would have been cool if they went 39 like the Black Bay 58. But the, the big watch world, even though it's only one millimeter bigger, is, is over. I agree. So here's essentially what I think they did. When they came out with the the ceramic cases, right, for the for the sub. They made a 40 millimeter case wear like a 42. Now they're making a 41 wear like a 40 because, yeah, we're seeing an extra millimeter flank to flank, you know, not, count, not counting uh, crown. Right. But the case is going to be a lot slimmer. It's not going to sit anywhere near as proud as the previous. Well, the previous was a hamburger. And it's a square. It almost sits like a Panerai to me. The way the lugs are. There which was no I taper. Thought, on certain wrists, look looked cool because it looked really like substantial, like a real sport watch. But it just, when you try on 
the new GMT versus that sub, oh. right. you're like, oh, there's no real comparison. There's no comparison. And that GMT... It was a Volvo. The, yeah, the GMT uh, of the last few years, I think, is the greatest body they ever made besides vintage. It just sat on your wrist. Now, I have not seen the new sub, and it's hard to tell from the side, but do you think it's tooled to sit like that? I believe so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna taper down like, like the GMT. Yeah. Which part do you mean tapering down? Like- the lug tips. So very much like the five-digit reference. So if you think like a standard maxi case, like the, you know, 116610. Right. Um, there was very little taper. The lugs almost were the same thickness all the way down to lug tip. Okay. So on the new case, they're going to taper a lot more. Uh. So it's going to feel thinner. Taper in? Yeah, taper in. Right. So yeah. the, from, from band to band? Uh, so that's the real question. Um, I don't know this for sure, but supposedly it's going to be a 21 millimeter lug width. Oh, shit. And... That's a bummer for guys like me who generally wear NATO straps on everything. Right. Yeah. You know, because it's been a 20 millimeter lug width since its inception. Right. Wow. See, but yeah. I kind of, it, just because the reason we love NATOs is the original James Bond. Right. You can see a little bit of pin with that original NATO because that original NATO, the red, black, and green. Oh, one, yeah. Oh, no. He had like a 16 millimeter. It's, you could it's see a, a little, lot of pin. Yeah, it's a narrow. Yeah. I kind of like seeing a little bit okay. of pin. Okay. All right. I like I like seeing pin with straps sometimes. It seems it just feels old timey to me. Right. No, and I'm it with just you. looks like I just needed this on a, there's something about when you see something that's not perfectly suited, it's like it speaks more to necessity than fashion. Yeah. And wabi I, sabi. Yeah. Perfectly I, imperfect. I just love a little bit of pin. Yeah. It's cool to me. <laughs> yeah. It's cool to me. I can see it. I can yeah. see it. It's cool to me. I don't know I, why. I uh so we know that they it's it's interesting. Let's look here real quick. A they, whole new subline actually is pretty crazy. That's really shaking things up. It really I mean I know it's like from a company who doesn't generally shake things up. To like how long of a how long of a time span like is a normal reference on a sub? Like the one the one one six one oh went on forever. I, I don't I mean I could do the math 30 years minimum. Yeah, like it was a long run. That's why yeah. there's so damn many of them. Like they're right. just everywhere. Yep. With very little variance. I mean, you know, they went from, you know, the the 16800, yeah. you know, sapphire crystal matte dial and then once they went to 16610, I mean, the only real changes were you know, the the you know, the movement was updated and mm-hmm. then, you know, the dial obviously went from from tritium to luminova, but that was really it yeah like they had the kermit a little and then the didn't the the markers changed on the kermit a little the kermit they went maxi markers they went maxi yeah 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 Yeah, but as far as like mechanically especially casing components crown case tube bezel all remain the same yeah yeah so the prices is what's tripping me out they didn't raise the prices not even on the sky dweller again so no date sub is 81 hundred mm-hmm Good price for a brand yeah. new movement, and they're W. It's one two four zero oh, six zero, oh, right? Is what? the new reference? It's uh, no six, is it? It. That's crazy. What yeah, is no, it? One, um, yeah. Oh, one two four six one two four zero oh, six zero. Oh, okay. oh, I believe. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> so I mean, I'm got, a no date guy. So if there's any of them that are for me, it's that one. Yeah. The Kermit, which is really obviously the watch that everybody's going to want. That's the best looking one. Too. It is fantastic. They return. Cause I was never a Hulk guy. I didn't like the body shape and it's I didn't green. like the pool table. It's a lot style. of green, a lot of green, mm-hmm. a lot of green. Mm-hmm. And it got hot for a while. Now, yeah. uh, Kermit is discontinued. Of course, all the 40 millimeters are discontinued. It's the sub is now 41 millimeter and you're not going to notice the difference as far as like size when you're wearing it. It might, like Bo said, might be slimmer and way better because that was the thing that knocked me out about the GMT. They're still using the blue loom. They never going back to the green. I don't light. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so the, the, the Kermit is 9550 and then a regular date sub is, Ninety one fifty, so it's four hundred bucks for a green um, bezel, uh, but really it's probably four thousand yeah. more for the green <laughs> bezel. Well, it'll depend on production numbers, which yeah, yeah. Now supposedly these watches were you know built for Basel back then. They're mm-hmm. done, and they're supposed to be in the shops today. 
Really? <laughs> yeah. I strongly <laughs> doubt that. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to call a couple of my ADs. Hey, guys. There's yeah. ma- they're maybe in the back room of a shop, but right. this, yeah. these, those subs will not see the display case of any... Mark my words. There is not an authorized dealer in America where yeah. that sub will touch Well, they always the hit display. European shores first, so they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be over there, and then we'll see them at some point. My question to you, Bo, is can you do the James Bond Bo Gorey modification on the new one? Sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just checking because it was... Uh, all right. So they've got... Now, what, the thing that really trips me out is they did a blue bezel sub on the white gold. Now, we had Smurf before, and uh, but it had a blue dial. Yeah. And I really was hoping, and so was Kevin, that they would save this blue bezel for eventually a blueberry gmt steel drop that That, would that would be cool that would make people's heads pop if they made a blueberry gmt i'd weep yeah it'd be nuts that to me is the that to me if you have the money is about as cool as it gets it's like there's so much speculation around that watch what where about the bezel the bezel yeah what is the deal? Because it was it just a custom job that well, someone asked for? Supposedly, it was an order from, if I'm not mistaken, the Peruvian Air Force. Okay. From a what? Peruvian Air Force. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So back way back when, um, you know, governments, military installations could place large scale orders from Rolex. We want right. this watch, and we want it configured this way. So, and you know, who knows how many of those were made? But that's supposedly where it came from. Yeah. Yeah. They are so cool looking. Yeah. That is one of the rarest oh, yeah. tool watches ever. I mean, just that insert alone. I mean, at one point they were like four or 5,000. Yeah. Now, t- maybe more than 10 now. They're- well, I mean, if you think about it, a 1675 from the same era is probably 16 grand now. Right. And a blueberry is $35,000. Oh, I, dude, I mean, just for the insert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so you're talking yeah. about the difference in the watch is only the insert, oh, yeah. and you're, du- you're doubling the price. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's, I mean, it's like having a, a bake, the right bake light bezel oh, versus a replacement. Right. Yeah. Like, Did, so it's a whole, it, the whole thing's, it's I the was, whole watch. I was working on a pair of 6542s today. Oh. I'd be so terrified to touch a bake light bezel. They're mm-hmm. very, very, very brittle. I, yeah. I used to be scared to death to even take one off yeah. to service a watch, you know, because obviously, you know, we have to clean the case. You can't put a yeah. clean movement. Do you have insurance for something like that? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah Cause yeah. I mean, fuck. I mean, I, I, I would hate to have to use it, but yeah. <laughs> How do you take it off? Very delicately. Wow. Because <laughs> those things just crack. Well, a lot of it is, is kind of looking them over and, and you know getting a good handle on the existing condition before you start messing with it. I yeah. mean, if it turns freely most of the time, it's going to come off okay. But if it's like seized up, then you have no clue what's going on under it. Did some, you know, some shoemaker glue it on at some point because he lost the retention ring? Is it just rusted and mm-hmm. packed with God knows what under there? Do so. you take it off? Okay. Do you, is there a machine that takes it off? No. You take it off by for, hand. For all the new model stuff, like all the ceramic insert stuff, yeah, we, we have jigs that I mean, actually I, take it off upside down. I mean, I've watched video of like how to get your bezel off, and you basically oh, shove Oh, those a, are a nightmare, yeah. You shove they a pocket knife. They put tape knife. on there, and they use a knife. I mean, I, did, I had a GMT, and I wanted to change the color. I just shoved a pocket knife under it and popped it off. Yeah, I mean, it works. But like with a Bakelite, I feel like popping it off from one side, that's where the real break exactly. risk comes you want, from. You want it to lift even. Even, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Fuck that. Dude, you're right, you're right on point. That's yeah, a I mean, watch I would be afraid to own. Hmm? Like, if they were like, if I had the money and, and I could get it, I'd be like, yeah, I, I wouldn't wear it. I'd no. be afraid to wear it. You would you wear it sparingly, and yeah, they really are so brittle. You yeah. Know, they're... That's a shame. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of uh, blown away that they didn't save that blue bezel, but... At the same time, I'm fired up. They're just starting to make all kinds of colored bezels. Right. But, dude, white gold is so rude. Oh, it is. It <laughs> is the rudest. Because, first of all, A, the price is bananas, right? Right. So you're, you're up to 30 grand for a sub, which is like, okay. At that price range, you can buy a lot of really interesting shit. Oh, yeah. And time and date. It's not like you're getting added complications. No, you're yeah. getting something you can take in the pool. Way <laughs> to go. Yeah. Which is the same as a G-Shock. Right. So, and then... A sub's already heavy. Then you're you're taking it up a notch, and you're like, oh no! If you think that this is this watch is going to hurt your back, they're damn near double the weight. Yeah, and yeah. you have the blue bezel, which is awesome. But God forbid you crack it, they're what fifteen hundred bucks. Yep. So oh, you're oh, ba- yeah. 
you're basically saying, oh, you want you want a blue bezel sub? Fuck you, dude. Yeah, <laughs> That's that. a Rolex is saying. They're like, yeah, no, no, we know you want this. Here right. it is, dickheads. Right. You better be a baller. <laughs> yeah, there's something sort of hilarious I about mean, it. There's quite a few that exist out there of people that, you know, have got the blue bezel assembly and put it on a steel sub. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. How do you get the blue bezel? You got to know. You're, you're, you're not going to get one in the U.S. You right. Know, you, the U.S. service centers are, are are way too tight with parts. But there's out in Europe, Australia. There's a lot of stuff. Floating there's around. some guys that'll sell them, huh? Oh man, that I mean, a blue bezel on the regular uh, sub now would be insane. I kind of. Ho- I will be honest though. I kind of wanted a blue dial. Blue dial. There's you something like about green works with black better than blue works with black. In my opinion. Like, the Smurf, to me, was rad-looking. Oh, yeah. I just don't yeah. want a white gold watch. I love right. the Smurf. Smurf is cool. Yeah. You know, and their whole teaser up until the watches were dropped, it kept saying, into the blue or out of the blue or something. I thought they were seriously going to do, since blue Milgauss, the blue Paddock 5711, the blue AP uh, Royal Crown. Yeah. A cr- Royal Crown. Mm-hmm. Uh Royal Oak. I'm talking about the soda. Right. The Royal Crown. But <laughs> the blue dials are so hot right now. I thought for sure they were going to drop a blue sub. I wonder if it just has something to do with the fact that that's just so Tudor. A blue, a blue dial with a blue bezel is a Tudor sub to me. Right. And right. they're just like, let's not. Let's like yeah. keep it, whatever. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I was hoping, I mean, cause, because of like the Black Bays, I mean, are we going to ever see a Rolex branded NATO? Dude. I doubt it. Oyster, oh. Oyster Flex, we might see more broad use of, but... You could charge such a, a silly amount. You could charge 200 bucks for a Rolex branded NATO that costs a dollar. Yeah. I yeah, because Omega sells them. Yeah, I'm part of the Idiot Squad. I, I paid over 100 bucks for an Omega NATO. Just, I wanted it. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. They are really nice material, though. They're like that, that seatbelt material NATO. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real soft, real pliable. They're nice. That's good. But uh, they did a... They got the old two tone, but blue face on it. Yeah, on the. But they're, they're doing a black two still, right? Oh, uh, let's see. Actually, here configure, so you can get the two tone. <laughs> Build a watch you can't buy. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I go. On, I've I've configured a watch on the. Like, you you t- click buy, and they're like contact an ad i'm like right. so basically why don't i just scream it out my window yeah i've configured a lot of cars i'll never own too <laughs> yep you can't get it with a black face anymore two-tone or steel two-tone I mean, of course not steel but look really wait yeah. a minute two-tone what which watch sub wow you can't get a black dial two-tone sub it doesn't look like it the, the selections are blue really and then uh, blue on the yellow gold also. And what? then it goes to white gold with black face. Huh. You only can Whoa. get a black face no in shit. the exotic metal. Will this finally bring the two-tone sub to the level of respect I believe it has deserved for a very long time? <laughs> I love them. I've, I've owned quite a few. I, lo- I mean, the fact that they're basically like the same, uh, uh, a 90s two-tone black sub is the same price as a 90s steel sub. Yeah. It's crazy. And par- every time I look, I'm like, can I just get someone to trade me straight up? Because I love, There's uh, we've talked about it, there's nothing dirtier to me than a fucking two-tone black Submariner. <laughs> it is the dirt bag oh, yeah. with money watch all day. Dr- it's like Dracar, uh, you know. It's, it's like my street dealer. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Retired guy with a Harley. Like <laughs> It is the be- like owned a gas station, then owned a second one. Yeah. His kids are fucking lazy. He's like, these kids are dickheads. I'm trying to watch. <laughs> all right. So that's the subs. And of course, we all know the Kermit is God. And I do think that Rolex was sitting around and they were like, whoa, these used ones are going for 15 grand. Mm-hmm. Let's just put out our own version. Uh, I don't know what the idea of it. Before it was an anniversary, they went with the green bezel. And then they sold that thing for like six years. That's the same reason why there's a uh, six or eight years or something. Uh, there's a green bezel or a lens on the Milgauss. It's all geared around Rolex anniversary and stuff. But they brought it back, which is interesting, right? Yeah, just, just to bring it back. I mean, it's not another anniversary. It's just it's yeah. part, of the, part of the line. Yeah. I, like, I mean, maybe this is like their new thing for a little while. It's just ver- color variants. Maybe. To, like, make it kind of personalized. Well, all the OPs that I'm sure we're going to talk about. Yeah. Are... Next up is the new 
date just. Did you look at this, Kev? Yeah. What's new about it? Yeah, what is new I about have, it? I really haven't looked. I don't know. I mean, all I could tell. They're Sizes doing it, are the same. They're doing it in 41. Um, so, you know, th- this is where the line's so confusing to me because they, the, they had the date just 42, right? Then they discontinued that. Then they have the day date 40. Yeah. But you can only get that in exotic metals. Right. I was really hoping, every year I hope for this, a day date 40 in stainless. Never happened. Like uh, a, yeah, why do you think? Anything with a day on it. It's, it's, oh, it's baller. Yeah. Considered like, there are, I, I couldn't tell you what year they made it. There is like a prototype steel day date out there somewhere for, that they made somewhere in the 70s, I believe. But there's, since then, there's never been a non precious metal day date. I mean, I, that's why I'm such a big fan of those Tudor ones. They, A, they're 37 millimeters. Yeah. And you get the day and the date, and it's steel, and they're not expensive. Like, they're, I think they're under 5,000 bucks. Which it's such a cool watch. Yeah. Especially any size, anything that's 37 And they got 45 degree chamfers on them. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they have chamfers. They have bevels on them, those, those old Tudor. Oh. Ah, yeah, the Tudor Day Dates. Yeah. They're like a sport cool. case. Yeah. 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 F- flat flanks. You know, yeah. And yeah, 45 degree I don't flanks. understand. I just, the size 41, I don't get it. Because <laughs> 42 and 40 feel different. 41 right. is nothing. I don't get it either. It only, my problem with it is on the Datejust 2, which I love, it's slightly too big for me because the sides of the case are rounded. Right. So it wears bigger. Where on the sub. Is there like a gap, like a bracelet gap when you have it on your wrist? It just, it, it sits like too far over to one side because yeah. I have a narrow wrist. Right. But it just, the rounded, uh, roundedness of it makes it feel bigger. Whereas the sub. Even though it's forty, because it's cut straight down, right? It it sits true to its width, whereas like I don't. I wonder which part of the watch they're measuring that distance at. Is it the out the apex of that curve, or is it where the case starts? Um, so it's going to be flank to flank, not counting uh, the, the crown. crown. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it is kind of the apex of that curve. Right. So the case itself probably starts at like thirty nine millimeters, and then it bows out. Yep. Okay. It's kind of a bummer that they'll never do a day date 40 in steel because holy shit, what a watch that would be. Some of the stuff I was reading about speculation, a lot of people were like, they should redo the Cellini line, which I absolutely agree with. I saw that too. I read that. That would be a rad, because the person said it, they're like, Rolex kind of seeds the dress watch market to all these other companies. Like they don't really get into it. Right. And the Cellini, some of those Cellini models are rad looking. The moon phase is cool. Oh, that one we were looking at when we were at the shop. The one Obama wears is cool. Oh, yeah. They're white gold. The case is a little too big, but like if Cellini made like a beautifully simple steel dress watch, I would fucking love to have that watch. If it was like in the $5,000 range on a strap, yeah. Came with a Rolex buckle, not the weird lame end piece right. strap thing, but just look like a traditional, like their old Oyster Precisions from the 50s. Yeah. Those are cool looking well, watches. I think Rolex thinks if that's what you want, buy an Oyster Perpetual. Yeah. You know, or a date. Which but the case, the case shape to me, just lo- it's the Oyster thinner. shape. Yeah. Whereas the old Oyster Perpetuals looked like a traditional dress watch it didn't the lugs didn't taper in they like stop and there's a corner and they go around like like an old long jeans or something right like that to me would be such a power move because it would bring back that kind of expensive but still kind of working class element to rolex where it's like no i have a stainless steel dress watch rolex because i'm a professional yeah but it didn't cost me ten thousand dollars just for the time and the date i would love that that's funny you said that $10,000, because a lot of people always hit me, what's a great entry-level watch around five grand? And usually I steer them at Tudor, and now I'm way into that Seiko Willard. Yep. That's 1100 bucks. Seiko's and- doing great stuff. The Grand Seiko line is yeah. outstanding. Have you looked at the new at the, the Long Jeans Heritage line much? Yeah, yeah. They're uh, really nice looking. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've kind of nailed it. Like, it, it's... You know they're they're inexpensive, and I don't know if the movements are terribly interesting. They're just but, at a base, they're good, but, good but like, sturdy movements. Yeah, but st- aesthetically, they really look nice to me. I like well, them. I'll tell you this: Oyster Perpetual uh, coming in at forty-one millimeters. So I'm sure they're sharing this case. Is this uh, a new case, or do you think this is part of the date just 
where they're going to share the case. I think it's the, just the Datejust 41 case with, you know, obviously a non-date movement. Right. Yeah. Right. So these I, watches. I, I don't like dates. I like them. I'm in. Yeah. 41 millimeter, 5,900 bucks. Insane colors. Oh, it's 5,900 for the 41? Yeah. That's not a bad price. Not at all. I wonder if that, the rationale is like, we can't make enough subs. So if you want that size, here's just a, here's your Rolex. Right. Yeah. And it's you know at least they're kind of looking at their past for once. I mean, it's a nod to the the Stella dials of old in I, all these know, colors. People I, mean, were, I like those dial colors. I think oh, yeah. some of them are cool. Well, look at this. They they've come out with really radical dial colors that are knocking me out. They got a yellow. They have a green. This. Turquoise is fantastic. Tiffany blue. Tiffany yeah. Blue. Can you imagine if they co-branded, dude? Oh. Isn't there? Isn't there still one store? I think it's in like the Cayman Islands or the Bahamas. There's still. I've heard there's one place. It's that still, still has an AD. Tiffany Dial Explore Tooth. Whoa. I don't know if it. It may have stopped with the new one, but right. the, I'd always heard there was like one left. It was in like Bermuda. Wow. No, yeah. I had no idea. That'd be bitching if there is. Well, I'll tell you what. Coral red. See, the, the, a lot of those are stellar colors, man. But, See, the red is the one I like the least. Oh, oh the least? I go, the, my favorite are the light blue and the yellow. I like the yellow. The oh. yellow is cool as shit. The t- trouble is, the way they look on the site That's is almost way more vibrant than they are. I think they'll be actually a lot more subtle looking yeah. in person. Now, I, I always like these. Uh, they had them the last couple of years, and uh, they were different size, but they sold like crazy. They had the pomegranate one that I always love. The loved. pomegranate one's nice looking. On a, on a woman, that watch looks cool as shit. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I like it too. Yeah. The thing I don't like that they did this year was they went double markers on the uh, three six and nine three. and yeah. uh, three. So I was looking at the silver dial one. It looks like they, they did like the Fotina thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you see those dark brown plots behind it? Oh, yeah, what's that about? See, it's, I think they're just, you know, it's like the, the plum-colored one you mentioned. Plot yeah. color, to me, is where they kind of bone it. Because they, they didn't do the hands. In, right, they didn't do the hands. Fotina, so. Yeah. But that's what ruined the gray dial 39 millimeter Oyster Perpetual was those blue plot yeah. Yeah, squares. Yeah. They were just a little too computery looking. I think it's kind of the same thing on these. I, yeah. I tell you what, though, these are pretty daring for Rolex. Um, you know, to have a coral red dial, uh, you know, the turquoise. Can di- you do the, the colored dials in the 36 millimeter oyster perpetual? They do, yeah. See that to me, like for a woman, a light blue dial on a 36 millimeter perpetual would be so rad looking. So they're doing they the colored dials on the 36 as well. Yeah. So those are going to sell very well. Well, I sent this over to someone I know, this uh, woman that's looking for a unique Rolex. I sent her this pink one right away. I was like, oh, this is just... The pink one will sell like mad. The pink oh, yeah, one is for smoking, sure. dude. Yeah. Well, and it's the price is pretty good. 5600 6, 6. Yeah. For the thirty six, I but. mean, they're they're taking advantage of uh, you know all these people that were you know doing refinished dials in vibrant colors and, right. and reselling, and they're like, okay, shout out to want to buy a watch, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, they were doing. They yeah, were, Ken's been doing that for a long time. Ken's been doing custom and, dials for twenty years, yeah, and years. he sold the shit out of them. Yeah, the he was just selling one this week, the turquoise. One. Yeah, he's always had custom dials. Now, how do they do that? Do they get a Rolex actual dial and paint it? Yeah, yeah, just just strip it down, take the dial plate, the factory dial plate, strip it down, repaint it. I have a question about dials and and refinishing. Yeah, okay? is clean? Do you consider cleaning the dirt off a dial refinishing it? Definitely not. Not. Yeah, because sometimes I'll see a dial, I'll see a watch, and I'm like, that's a nice dial, and it'll just look like there's dirt in the corners and shit, and I'm like, can they not get that off? Is there a kind of staining? That you can't get off? Uh, there is, yeah. And normally it's from water intrusion. Okay. Yeah. And it's not going anywhere. I mean, you see all the... No, not not generally speaking, water damage doesn't come off unless a dollar Okay, yeah. okay. Because I'll see stuff that just looks legit dirty. And I'm like, why don't you clean it, dude? On like silver dials more silver often dials, than not, yeah. right? So, yeah. Oh, especially in... Na- I love enamel dials. So I'm always trying to find enamel dial watches, which are really hard to find in right. good condition. Yeah. But those are the ones that are... Cu- they're always dirty. Yeah. And I'm always like, is it unsafe to clean an enamel dial? Like, what no, about it? No, it's most of the time, like, permanent staining like that is water intrusion at some point. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. next step... Uh, 
what's become my favorite watch pretty much uh, in the line was the Sky Dweller. When it came out, I absolutely hated this watch. I thought it was the ugliest thing <laughs> I'd ever seen. I couldn't understand how they put this weird shitty little dial in the middle of the dial and it bled into the date wheel and everything i didn't understand the watch for years it was big in the hip-hop world a lot of guys wearing fake ones out there i just didn't understand this watch and then one day it hit me i was like whoa this thing is radical and bo was like it's the most intricate Movement Rolex is ever There's a lot made. going on in there, yeah. Yeah, isn't it, it? You you want you you control everything with the bezel, right? That's craziness. Yeah, that watch is cool. That, that watch, watch is, is so cool. That watch is beyond cool. Do you the, like it on the bracelet or the strap? Well, now they come on the Oyster Flex. Oyster Flex. Boo! I like, <laughs> yeah, I hate rubber straps. Boo! <laughs> boo to me. Uh, boo to that. I think because <laughs> it's like. I understand the Oyster Flex on a uh, Yacht Master. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of because that's already a weird watch. But this is a serious luxury watch. And to put this band on it, it doesn't really make sense to me. I've seen people put this band on a Daytona recently. I think it sold well in the Daytona. So right. that was the motivation. The C- I mean, the Sky Dweller is the closest Rolex gets to high horology. So putting a rubber strap on it is weird to me. Yeah, What's yeah. the price difference in strap versus no strap? I'll tell you right now. So with the rubber, it's clocking in at, well, of course, the, you can't get a steel with the rubber. Nope. Nope. It's only the, uh, the big baller. So with a regular um, like uh, bracelet, it's forty six six fifty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, forty six six fifty. You can buy, by the way, a cabin out in Joshua Tree for that. Oh yeah. And without the, oh, so it's forty thousand. So you you get six thousand dollars off. You know what the funny thing huh. is? Let's yeah. say you need a new bracelet for that watch yeah. in, in white gold. Yeah, it's going to be probably fifteen grand. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like if you you know shred your bracelet, motorcycle accident, yeah. whatever. I mean, yeah, it's it's what a six thousand dollar premium retail for right. the bracelet. But if you need a replacement one, it's going to be double that. Wow. So they charge you double. Yeah. So that's what I always say. Um, there was a watch recently I was looking at. I can't remember which one it was, but I was like, I think it's Tudor, and it's like, oh no, you've got to get it with the with the bracelet because it's only a hundred dollars more. And if you were to buy the bracelet, it's yeah. like seven fifty. Right. So I was like, you got to get that, and then just buy your own leather. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. That rivet bracelet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That thing's sweet. Right. So look at that. It is six thousand dollars less, but it does. Did you guys look at it? Did you like it? I, I mean, I liked it. It's cool because it looks the same to me. I just don't like the rubber strap. The steel. A steel. I. I wish. I mean, you can't have a smooth bezel because you wouldn't be able to turn it. Right. So the, the bezel's a little big for me, and the watch is too big for me, period. But right. as looks-wise, that dial is so cool. I just love the way it looks. It's a cool-ass watch. Big watch. Heavy watch. The steel one. What's the steel? Do they still make the steel one? So the steel one is still at fourteen eight. But this it goes is, for, what, 20 now, 22? 22, which, 22, by the way... Is that high? Yes, yes sir. But well, listen to this. Saw a Daytona yesterday. White face, Daytona, box papers, everything, new... Twenty six thousand. Oh my god! Zenith movement? No, huh? no, Zenith no. or non ceramic? Oh, just new one. The new, new one, one. Yeah, yeah. the 26. new white six. Twenty six. Damn, that's close to double. You're getting into double range. Yeah. And this blue sky dweller is twenty two, twenty four, twenty six. Also, and uh, I'll tell you what, it the blue sky dweller is way more rare than any white face Daytona. Another Those blue dials that Rolex makes. Just to look at them up close, they're so fun. They, they're literally just interesting to look at. You can just turn them on your wrist, and oh, they the, change the way light hits them is so cool. Well, it's the like the sunburst application of, of the paint. It, yeah. it grains to the out. Ugh. It looks cool. Even blue dial, like a picture of a blue dial two tone sub, always looks like shit. But you see them in real life, you're like, oh, yeah, I get it. It just looks pretty. Yeah, especially, you know, a blue dial sub that has some age on it. Dude. I mean, you've seen them go purple. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them that, I mean, you look at them straight and they're blue as can be and you turn them, you know, just a little bit 
and or hit them with some different light, and they're gleaming purple. Although our friend uh, Cam at Craft and Tailored yeah. had a, G- a gold GMT where the dial turned like lava red. Oh yeah, I saw. And it, it was like speckled. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't. It was I was. Sick. I couldn't believe it. Like it as a sick. dial to look at, I've never seen anything quite that cool. It looked so badass. I don't know. I wonder how static that color would remain though because if it was probably a 25 or 30 year old watch well you're not going to see a lot of changing in dials just on normal daily wear mm-hmm. almost any dial that has drastically changed it's water intrusion oh, oh, oh it's water damage 99 percent. what about that shit is that right it's ones, not sun what about the ones from where is it? Like uh, Costa Rica. Like tropical dials? Yeah, tropical dials. I, I mean, there's a lot of speculation. Personally, um, I think it has something to do with heat and, and UV exposure. Yeah, because apparently, you know, the sun's so much stronger. Push you out of the there. equator. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So because I've been thinking of taking my sub and just taping it to my door outside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like me yeah. and Dean talked about, like, because I have an extra bezel. I was like, should I just tape this bezel Dude, to the door? Put it in a clear pelican case and put it on the roof of your house and forget about it. Yeah, wow. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. back in a year and they're like, oh, this bezel's worth a thousand bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I got a ghost bezel. <laughs> exactly. Boy, so, hey, next thing you know, you're making ghost bezels. Well, dude, I bought a ghost bezel from you. Yeah. And, and then I ended up selling that watch. The price was. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And that, that was just a, a 16610, if I remember. Yeah, it was right? a 16610 with yeah, a bezel. 90s. But when I put that ghost bezel on, I got stopped all the time. Oh, yeah. I got stopped by just a random guy on my street walking my dog, like, hey, where'd you get that watch? I've got a few bezel inserts that yeah. watches have, have came in and gone, but the inserts stay with me. I, I've had them for years, mm-hmm. and they're just, just amazing. You That's know, rad. I'll, I'll put it on a watch that I own for you know a year or whatever. But then when I sell the I watch, wonder the what would be, always stays. What do you think is a better business? If you could get the kind of lamps they use to grow weed and you just put bezels under it? Oh, yeah. Oh, just, the UV lamps? Yeah, you just stuff? cook bezels all day. Yeah. So um, one, of, uh, one of the watchmakers uh, at our shop, when he was in uh, watchmaking school, there was one of the instructors there that had, I think he had it on his keys, but he basically had a key ring with mm-hmm. I. Uh, maybe a hundred inserts. <laughs> Whoa. And I mean, of varying shades. I wow. mean, there, there was probably tens of thousands of dollars worth of bezel inserts on there. <laughs> on yeah. his keychain? Yeah, I mean, there was fuchsia GMT bezels. And, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Well, because you have to remember back in the day, I mean, those were throwaways. Oh, yeah, oh, they're dude. throwaways. Yeah. I used to go to Craig Evans Mall in La Brea. And Just talk to him today. In the early 2000s, 2003, 4, 5, you could walk in there and be like, I need a bracelet. And he'd go, hold on. And he'd bring out a box yeah. of oyster bracelets. He had probably a few hundred because he told oh, yeah. me he either it was him or his dad bought out an Anaheim service center. And so they had all this shit, Omega bracelets, everything. And he'd sell you a bracelet for 300 bucks. The bezels were like, he'd give them to you. Because yeah. if you'd bought one, well, he's like, I'll tell you. Yeah, just take it. Stacks oh, you, of you GM- like that old thing? Yeah, just take it. Stacks of GMT bezels. Yeah. Stacks. Crazy. I mean, Crazy. no one even would have thought. I mean, you know, I've... I've he been started doing this- antique road show. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, I've been in this business for the better part of 20 years. And I mean, even when I first got it started, I mean, I was interested in vintage, of course, mm-hmm. but... You know, bezel inserts were nowhere near I as wonder, valuable. I mean, they were only, something with an interesting look was always you know, you know, a few hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. But the fact that people are getting two, three, four, five thousand dollars for inserts now, ghost inserts, fuchsia inserts, yeah. is just unreal. Yeah, and, and the market is crazy. Yeah, now, you can know? you have you tried to figure out a way to do that yourself? Can no. you age them? No. no, I've I've had bezels come through the shop that I've looked at and go, yeah, somebody sandblasted this. Yeah, really, sandblasting really seems like the obvious fuck up. But I don't know. In my opinion, not only is it unethical, there's <laughs> no way to replicate history. I yeah. mean, you've seen in the guitar world with yeah, it's all kinds like of relics. Fotina on, yeah, yeah. on Les Pauls and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, the, you can tell. Yeah, you can always tell. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now. Um, the Milgauss is just down to the two now. The black face and the green. Yep. There's no other ones. We know that. I think the white dial Milgauss may be the only model that doesn't have a come up. It is truly ugly. Right. It, it was not. It was an ill-advised choice. <laughs> There's nothing else uh, new out there. Um, but what was interesting was Paddock. I wonder if they're going to announce some watches. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it since they didn't do Basil. Mm-hmm. And you know they have some watches ready to come out, yeah. which is really weird. 
I wonder what's going with these companies that have in the last five years become these makers of these impossible to get steel watches. I wonder what the rationale is market wise is because if they wanted to, if Patek just flooded the market with Aquanauts and Nautiluses, they'd make an absolute killing. But then it's like you fuck with your prestige brand kind of thing. Well, it's the same thing with diamonds. You know, if De Beers emptied their vaults, and put all the diamonds out in the market, they'd be, you know, 100 bucks a carat. It's like Bill Burr's, but he's like, oh, they're rare. That's why there's four diamond stores at every mall in America. Yeah. Exactly. Like, well, you bullshit. know, what's even funnier about that is where the first time I went to that wholesale watch show in Vegas, you know, I got in with the, uh, the jewelers uh, guys, and then you go like, oh, there are no rare watches. No. There was... 50 hulks there yep. was 20 i mean i send you pick there's that come there's a there's a company itself that's called watch trading co or something yeah and i send dean pictures all the time because this guy he must pay a premium for buying watches because he has 30 of everything i don't care what you're looking for how rare you think a rolex is he has 30 pepsis 30 batmans he has seventeen thousand hulks he has yeah. so many Hulks. He had, he had tables of Hulks. And the, pri- the prices are high because I think he may buy high, but this yeah, dude right. has anything you need. Well, that's the, that's the name of the game in the dealer world right now is you have to pay up. There's so many new dealers and wannabe dealers in the market, yeah. especially in the vintage world, that, I mean, when something comes to market, yeah. when a fresh watch comes to market, you know, a barn find, so to speak, right. so many people jump on it that now it's almost... You pay full value just to be the one to bring it to market. Yeah, well, yeah Cam said there's nothing out there right now. Yeah, yeah. you basically break. Like, it's so weird to me that people are probably making two thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollar watch. Right, right. Because they Nuts. just they were like they have to be the one who has it. Right. Yep. Because yeah. you bring so much attention to your store exactly. by exactly. having a really crazy watch. I saw fifty four oh two yesterday. A serial, which is the Royal Oak first year of this watch, Gerald Genta. And it had box papers and everything. It's a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. How about that Daytona that Cam has? It's the first. I think it's the first reference from the, when they changed the Daytona to what went all through the nineties, the Zenith movement one. And it's with the one without the polished links. Seventy-five grand. Because I never see those ever. You mean the first Daytona that goes to the Rolex movement? No, the first Daytona that went Zenith. Oh, when Zenith. Oh, yeah. I got you. Oh, wow. I think a it's like Z- a steel Zenith Daytona for seventy five grand. Yeah, because it's the is it's it the new f- old stock. I think it's new old stock, and it is the very first. It's before they even polished the middle so, length. Oh, so it's got the non uh, the non flip lock bracelet. It's just a standard oyster yeah, bracelet. I think so. Yeah, it's probably an A serial. It's like it, it, I never see them. Like yeah. I, because I'm I'm I when I first started liking Daytonas, I was like, I don't like the middle length. Did they ever make this watch? At a reasonable price without first, the polished middle years. Link. Yeah. And they did, but you never, ever saw them for without sale. Without the ever. polished center links? Yeah, the first couple of years they did. Really? Yep, but yep. they are I've owned one. crazy rare. Wow. Well, crazy bro, rare. If you have a uh, tool watch, Milgauss, GMT, or Daytona, and it has the polished links, and you don't like the look of that, Bo can get rid of that, and he can bring it back. And put, put it back in. Right. Yeah, it's reversible. Yeah. And, uh, it, <laughs> like it, a pair of pants. I'll right. tell you what. It looks a thousand times better to see a Daytona with no polished oh, yeah. stuff. Because I mean, the, they first started when the, when the first ceramic GMT came out. I right. saw one without – someone took out the polished middle link, and I was like – Oh, it's the best looking watch I've ever seen. Oh, we were getting them in droves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, we got a couple little tricks though, because the coronet on the flip lock, mm-hmm. there's a couple little tricks we have to do to get that perfectly matte to blend in with the rest of it. See, I'd leave it shiny. What's that? I think I'd leave it shiny. Oh yeah? Yeah, why not? But then you've just got a shiny, one little shiny rectangular That's what I'm section. talking. It looks, it feels really on purpose. Look, I know I'm making your job harder. <laughs> oh yeah. But like uh, to no, me. No, you're making my job easier. Oh, okay. If you want to leave it shiny. Oh yeah, much easier. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Ah. So what do you think? Uh, let's get out of here. But before we do, what do you guys think? They're going to drop some more watches in April. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, the, blue, the blue bezel could be... You know, them like kind of putting their flag in the air, like, just so you know, we're about to drop Here's the sedan, heavy. the coupe's coming. But to me, all I care, I, I'm more interested in a new watch. I wish they would, they would release a, like, 
market statement about how many they're going to make. No way. Who's? I want to be like, okay, you're making these watches. That's great. They <laughs> might as well be holograms. Yeah. So like, none what, of us can get them. Yeah. Like, talk to me about a little bit about production. Like, what is their wait list? You know what? There should be a wait list through Rolex. Not through ADs. Because yeah. then there's none of that favoritism bullshit. Because I'm not going to name any names, but every time Dean sends a famous person to his favorite dealer... It's weird. Like, they get a watch. Yeah. Oh, weird. my God. When I, <laughs> yeah, when I ask, they don't have it. When one yeah. of our famous Who comedians... No, 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 no. I went in How many with, watches did you buy from us this year? Oh, no, 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 no. I went in with this guy, and he goes, he goes yeah, he's super wealthy. He goes, hey, uh, I want to go down there and uh, get a watch. So we go down, he buys in one second a white gold... Daytona and the Platinum Daytona right on the spot. They're both there. Wow. And he uses them to exercise. And, then, just yeah, and then they said, oh, and here's a Pepsi GMT that yeah. somebody didn't pick up. Oh, you might want. How convenient. And he's like. That yeah. somebody didn't pick up? Yeah. What? Do you it's, think I'm a moron? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's what I mean. It's like I want to. I just wish there was some clear, a little bit of clarity from Rolex. Yeah. For yeah. the for the normal of us, <laughs> it's like should I never even look at pictures of these ever again? Right. Or because I I just I can't bring myself to pay that high a premium for a watch that's still in production. Yeah. If it's discontinued, all right. But if I pay double for a watch that if they decide to crank up the factory higher or hire a bunch of new people, you lose. Because that was that's what was told to me by someone who worked at a Ben Bridge a few years ago. They were like. They don't have enough people to make watches. Their well, market keep, is expanded all over the world. Excuses. Well, there's yeah. new rich people yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. So their market is expanded worldwide. You have all this new money, and they don't like. Sometimes there's four people that can make a sky dweller. Yeah. Like so, it just takes forever. No, that, that's not true. I mean, there, there's there's nowhere near as much actual human production going on, right. As there used to be. Do you think the the human stuff is in the finishing? Um, a lot of it's automated, everything as far as casing components at some point there is hand finishing. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as movement goes, I mean, all the, that I would doubt everything is assembled by humans, but manufacturing wise, it's, it's all computerized. I was talking to Jonathan Ward a couple weeks ago from, That that was a great episode by the way. Thank you. Yeah. And he was straight up going, look, there's a lot. This is what he said. And I love everybody has a a great story. But he said, there's a lot of unmarked buildings in China. (laughs) And uh, I'll tell you one thing. There's Rolex parts coming out of there. And I was like, come on. No. Well, the the interesting thing about Rolex is, I mean, back in the day, um, you know, when we talk about like dials and, and other components, you know, you had Baylor, you had Singer. Yeah. Um, they had other companies, making Swiss dials. companies, making yeah. parts. Absolutely everything is done in house now. They have they are their own foundry. They're making their own metals. They're printing their own dials. Absolutely everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, why I wish the waiting list stuff was just through them. Like they should just control all of it. Your AD should be a pickup place. Could be like like you know like Tesla, like custom knife makers do. You know, this is how many of this model I'm making. Yeah. They go live at this time. Good luck. Yeah. It's like buying tickets to Radiohead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wish, because, like, I mean, we complain about this all the time, that I, there is something I find annoying about tool watches being out of reach. Yeah. yeah. You know, that, but that's made me, I, I just look at other companies now. Well, it starts to spin into other stuff that really gets you angry, because you're like, wait a minute, Tudor is a wait list now? That's supposed yep. to be the entryway into Rolex. That was always the... Right, is their test bed? Yeah, that was always the frame of mind of the thing. You can't afford a Rolex, get your Tudor, wear that for years, and then maybe later when you retire, you get your Rolex. But now there's wait lists for all the Tudors, yep. you know, which is I crazy. Just, I don't want to see that, that infamous hacky picture of a wrist on a Ferrari steering wheel oh. with a cigar, and it's just a sub? Yeah. Like, oh, you got a sub? Yeah. Cool. Like, yeah. there's millions. Like, I, that's yeah. reserved for a complicated watch yeah. or gold. You would think, yeah. A fifty-seven eleven something. All these watches are unobtainable. Uh, unobtainable now, man. I mean, what's going on with the Royal Oak fifteen two hundred two? Is just, I mean, the fifty-seven eleven Nautilus was already stupid. Now it's just like, uh, I mean, I kept looking at that thing in COVID. This is going to drop. That didn't drop at even a dollar. Because nope. well, people that make passive income, right? People yeah. with real money always have money. They did Absolutely. great. 
They did yeah. great during the pandemic. Yeah. They're still oh. doing great. Oh, yeah. Because money's super cheap. They're buying into everything for nothing. Like, they're doing great. Well, look at the billionaires. They had the top 20, and they showed what they were worth before COVID and what they're worth now. And it was like all of them were massively. But, dude, I sell more paintings now than I've ever sold in my entire life. Yeah, Please. wow. Just yeah, give everybody your people, Instagram because he's selling paintings. Kevin G. Christie. Well, now I don't sell them myself anymore. You what? Now I have a dealer. So if, you oh. want, if you're interested in my art, contact the whole gallery in New York. There awesome. You go. Awesome. Yeah. Bo Gore, great to have you. L.A., Los Angeles great Watch. Here. Los Angeles Watch Works. Yep. The Instagram. Uh, your work is fucking beyond. Thank did you, you just re- Did you recut a Mark II recently? Yes. That shit was bananas. Thank you. They're a lot of fun, dude. <laughs> they are round. When they're, they, I love them because when they're round, oh, they are round. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they, people round those fuckers out. <laughs> people don't really realize how much work that takes. That well, because yeah, well, it's... Even after it's chamfered right, it's still a very amorphous shape. Right. So knowing it be that's very difficult. That to me is like it's it's the same as when you see people like sculpt a car model, like the clay car model type deal. That looks hard as shit. Most of the time is tool setup. Uh, because if you're off even a, a fraction of a degree, it changes everything. How wow. much masking tape are you going through? A lot. How many what? How much masking tape are you going Zero. through? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> also, the tape we get you on here and do a, a Forerunner episode. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the Forerunner, what's going on in that market yeah, right the now? The Overland World. The markups and, and everything on those damn things and all the aftermarket incredible par, uh, parts are, are mind boggling. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. We always do this. We, uh, I am definitely not an expert. Kevin isn't either. Bo is, but we I'm an of expert. some things. I'm yeah. an expert. But we love <laughs> watches, and uh, I tell you, the most interesting thing about COVID is a lot like nine eleven to me. I just don't care about what time it is at all <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, I have no. Idea. It reminds me of. I I don't have to be anywhere, which sucks. This last Saturday was the least Saturday of all the Saturdays during the <laughs> pandemic. I was at home. I was like, no, it's not. Today is not Saturday. It's it was the so craziest. nuts, man. But I do hope one day, I mean, let's be honest here. A watch is fantastic to have, but it's great to go out in your in your boots you love and your fucking denim yeah. and your watch and my your jackets that i never get to wear in southern ja- california jackets <laughs> never yeah. get to wear the jackets. i can love my leather jackets man i know right i'm like come on snow i know it's so funny but uh anyway thanks for tuning in i love all you guys and uh don't forget about the new handmade show going uh separate podcast all the handmade ones will be under one blanket and also CBD Lion. I just gave these guys some CBD here. C- I'm so high now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tastes no, that, great. That's lotion. It dude. tastes super good, though. <laughs> CBD Lion. Uh, they got pet tinctures. If you got a cra- you got a crazy pet, Bo? Nope. I got a messed up back, though. So oh, there you go. There, I got to use for it. Use that. And uh, CBD Lion, third party tested. None of that truck stop bullshit. This is fine, fine, clean CBD. And it is CBDLine.com. Use the code DEAN for 20% off everything all the time. You can keep using the code every month when you get a re-up on that shit. They got the sports tape now. You might like that. You just put CBD t- infused sports tape. Yeah. Interesting. Really? Great. I'll give you some of that. I'm in, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that shit's great. Because then it's not all greasy or whatever. You just stick it on. And it's like time early nice. shit, you know? Oh. CBDLion.com, absolutely the greatest company. These guys have been nothing but fucking gods here for the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. See ya. Thanks, guys.